All right, guys, it is big adventure weather here in the bluegrass. It's about 86 degrees and uh, just a little bit overcast. Eli and I are on our way to the gorge to do about a five mile uh, kayaking trip. We're gonna take a couple of dogs with us, get in some real life adventure training. But like I, I set this stuff up out here today cause we gotta take some of it. We gotta take the kayak and we uh, got a guy coming out later and uh, we're gonna do a little bit of work. I got some steel targets outside. We're gonna do a little bit of work with some dogs, some gunfire stuff uh, and shooting a little bit. And I got my truck out here because of course you gotta load in the truck to go on an adventure. Now, so <laughs> an email that I get sometimes, which is kind of, it's, I find it very amusing. <laughs> <laughs> but people are like, hey, Stoney, you know, I want to take my dog out and do a big adventure, you know, with it, but it's getting too big to pick up and put in a car. <laughs> well, listen, guys, don't pick your dog up and put it in a car. Teach your dog to get in a car. Teach it to get in a boat. Teach it to get on the four-wheeler. Teach it to get in the bed of your truck, you know. Uh, and that's what we're going to talk about today is just how to, you know, go about generally acclimating your dog so that you can tell them to get in a truck or get in a boat or get on the four-wheeler or get in whatever you want to, right? It just really is as simple as what I'm going to show you. Let me put my coffee down over here. So I've got kind of a, kind of, my truck's got a little bit of a lift on it because a lot of times we have to go through gullies and uh, <clears throat> you have what's called an approach and departure angle on a truck. And so like when you're going through a gully, if you're, if this part of your bumper sits down here in the back or the front end of your truck is too low, then as you try to go through a gully, like you, you, you'll, you'll run into the edge of that creek bank, you know? And so Eli and I have spent way too much time uh, <laughs> <laughs> with a little short handled shovel getting this truck out of uh, ditches you know so I put a lift kit on it and uh, we don't go anywhere crazy that's why it just has general all-terrain tires on it but you know like putting that lift kit on it makes it a lot easier just to go through these little swags that we have to go through now uh, I always acclimate the dogs to the four-wheeler because here in Kentucky there's just a lot of places that you can go where like uh, there's four-wheeler trails you know uh, like a lot of old mine sites and stuff and just every county around here is just miles and miles of trails and so like we're dragging this four-wheeler around in the truck all the time now over here you see my general kayak the kind of kayak that i like which is a hobie kayak it's pretty heavy it's got pedals on it and i mainly use this in the lake and the river and stuff now eli he's got a he's, he, he's got a much more lightweight kayak and uh, it's awesome for getting in places and dragging and stuff, but these kind of bigger, heavier, this is what's called a fishing kayak. It's a lot easier to have the dogs in it and stuff uh, because it's real stable. You can stand up in this one actually. And uh, then this, we acclimate the dogs to getting in this because uh, you know a lot of people that we work for, uh, they use these little, these are just little blinds for their dogs really, okay? so. What, what I'm saying here is that all this stuff are things that we use in the course of our day, everyday activities. Now, whatever you're using in the course of your everyday activities, I know a lot of you, a lot of you guys watching my channel, you are Subaru drivers. <laughs> and so, you know, if you're, if you're stuck driving a Subaru, this same, <laughs> this same uh, basic advice applies, okay? You know, I would, I would recommend that you get rid of that Subaru and get you a real truck, but whatever. All right, so now, look, look at this dog. This dog, his name's Houston. He's an awesome silver lab. Now, what else you're gonna notice today is it's a whole parade of breeds out here. It's all kinds of dogs. But look at Houston. He got up there, you know, all by himself, and he's hanging out, and he's saying, well, Stoney, let's go somewhere. And, uh, you know, I don't blame him. Uh, now, with these other dogs, back up, Eli, and give him a shot of some of these other dogs that are here. There's some dogs laying around playing. I got a little Malinois. Shelby, I have a boxer. And now you notice these dogs here, they didn't all get up in the truck. But, uh, you know, not all of them are 100% sure that getting in the truck is going to be any better than just staying here and playing at my house. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get in the truck with them. Whenever you're trying to get a dog to get into or onto something, what you do is you just want to make it easy for them at first. Now, I drug this set of steps over here, but you can use a couple of Rubbermaid boxes or whatever you want, you know. You just want to make it easy for them. Like so, if you're going to approach getting your dog on your four-wheeler, you know, of course, eventually you're just going to point at your four-wheeler and the dog will go over here and jump on the four-wheeler. But in the beginning stages, you'll want to come let them put their feet on the, uh, on, the, on the footboards here, right? And then, like, if you're, you know, if you're real particular about your four-wheeler, you can get you a little vinyl cover that they sell at AutoZone. And uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of sticky on the back because they won't scratch up your plastics, you know. And uh, then you need you a nice little square, like a rectangular uh, riding area up here because they can't really ride on a rack very well, of course. You could buy something fancy. We just took a, 
piece of plywood and uh, made us a, a rack. Now getting into kayak, it's the same thing. Like the kayak is pretty easy to acclimate a dog to if you take and you start off. See how what we've done here is Eli has put four blocks here. And this is our first stage. And we do it like that because when it's on those blocks, it's 100% steady. I mean, you know, you're not even worried about, there's literally nothing that can bother a dog. Then what we do is we take the blocks away. And if you have a kayak that has a keel, that's just this part here in the middle. It keeps, helps it go in a straight line. Then, like, you can just lay it on the ground, and, like, when the dogs get in it, it kind of goes like this, and then they get used to it. And if you want to get real fancy, uh, you can get you a pool, like I got for my wife, <laughs> and you can put your kayak in that and get your dog used to being on the water. But to be honest with you, most of the time, if you'll just start off with your kayak steady and then put it on the ground and rock it for a few days, letting the dogs get in the habit of it, then, you know, they'll be good. Now, see, you can see Houston's been out here enough times before. He just, a lot of these dogs that you see out here, they're my mentor dogs. Uh, they're just dogs that have been here for training when they're puppies. And they, when they come back to board, you know, then I get them out and I put them in the training rotation. And they kind of set the example for the younger dogs. And so you'll see that's what Houston is doing right here. He's just kind of doing everything, showing off. All right, so here's my, here's my truck. And what I want to be able to say is get in the truck, right? And I want the dogs to get in the truck when I say. Now, what do I do? I use these mentor dogs a lot. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, here, dog, show those puppies how to do it. If you don't have a mentor dog, then easy thing to do is just do it yourself and reward incremental progress towards your ultimate goal. So I want the dogs to get up in the truck. So I'm going to get over here on the steps and I'm going to call them little puppies. Like we'll start with Shelby and I'll give her treats for coming up on the steps. Oh, and there comes Jack. A lab, so I got a Malinois and a lab and a silver lab, another Malinois named Hank. And I'll work my way up here a little bit. Oh, and I'll get in the bed. Come on, babies. Oh my gosh, you're so smart. Oh my gosh, you're so smart. Good. Oh, and there comes Iris. Iris, can you get up here? And Iris is pretty smart. That's good. That's good here. Go back that way. Good. And then there's Ronan. Ronan's pretty smart. That's pretty easy. Okay. Now, then I'm going to come down from here. And every day that I practice this, and some dogs, it only takes a day of practice. Like, I just start moving towards the bed of the truck and telling them to get in the truck. So they'll be like over here with me. Come here, dogs. You know, and then I'll start moving towards the truck. Come on, get in the truck. Oh, good dogs. Very good dogs. And give them a little treat, a little treat action. Very nice. Oh, and there's Goose. Look at Goose. He's a little bit lazy. Luckily, Goose's owners love lazy dogs. Come on, Goose, you can do it. <clears throat> now having these older mentor dogs, like uh, it really helps. But I want y'all to watch Goose right there. Goose has been here for as long as Shelby's been here or Jack has been here. And uh, like, <clears throat> it just took him a little longer. So if you have a dog that it takes a little bit longer, just be very patient, guys. It's, no big deal. So it takes you five or six days instead of, you know, one day. As long as you're consistent and persistent, this stuff always works out. So then I'm gonna come off my steps. Now, what you, <laughs> I want y'all to listen. Every, like, like these, this Malinois puppy right here, people get these dogs, let me show you. <clears throat> people get these dogs and they watch a thousand YouTube videos of these dogs chasing and biting people and then they get them and they email me and they say, hey, Stoney, hey, why is my Malinois puppy chasing and biting me and being mean to the other dogs? And I'm like, because you bought a dog that's bred to chase and bite people. What are you talking about? I'm going to put my glasses over here before they get broke. <clears throat> all right, so we're going to do this again. And I'm going to try to stop, not, not quite get all the way in the truck. <clears throat> come on, dogs. Get in the truck. Good. And I'll come to about right here. And now I'll just take me a couple of treats and I'll throw back there. Just like that. Good. Get this out of the way. There you go. Now, see, look, these guys got it. Look at Goose. Goose is a little bit confused. <clears throat> so I'm gonna have to help Goose out. Come on, Goose. So I'm gonna give Goose a treat here. And some of these dogs are gonna get it. There, now Goose is getting it. Come on, Goose. You can do it. I'm just gonna have to do it with Goose a few times. There we go. Come on, Ronan. You can do it. Come on, Ronan, Ronan, Ronan. Come on, Hank. Come on, Jack. Very nice. All right, now you can do it again. 
And like I said, guys, this just takes however long it takes. But what you're trying to do is stop just a little farther away every day. So, like some of these dogs will get this part and some of them won't. So I'll be here. But hey, get in the truck. There we go. Perfect. Do you see how that works? All right. So easy. Now, these younger dogs, they're going to need a little bit more help maybe. Except this one here. These Malinois, I swear, they're what, uh, what at the kennel we call the best worst dogs. When they're being good, they're the best. They're the smartest, the most athletic, the most pattern cognizant. You know, it's just when they're not being very nice, they're a lot of aggravation. Oh, good. Good dogs. Very nice. Now, okay, so let's move on to like, uh, say, getting on the four wheeler. Getting on the four wheeler is the same thing, right? You just come over here. And the easy part of getting on the four-wheeler is when it's just a static thing. It's not making any noise. It's not whatever. But, like, to get the dog to actually ride on the four-wheeler, you have to get them on it first. And then you have to get them on it and get the four-wheeler to where it's running because it really vibrates a lot. And then you gradually start adding in the movement. So let's see if we can get a dog on the four-wheeler. Come on, Houston. Good boy. And taking, just use my standard old targeting techniques here where I put a piece of food up here. Very nice. Very nice. Houston's almost too big for my four-wheeler. I'm gonna have to get a dang big old side-by-side -side or something for his big booty. Now look, here comes Hank. He sees Houston do it, and Hank says, well, maybe I can do that. I'll get up here with him. Oh, don't knock me off of that, dude. Oh, come on, Ronan, you can get up here. All right, Houston, get your big booty off of there. You can go on off that side. Go, 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 go. There you go. Come on, Jack. Come on, Ronan. Oh, there we go. Made some room. Give me some space there, Houston. Good. Now look at Hank. It's taking Hank a little longer. <laughs> Here comes Shelby, though. Come on, Shelby. You can do it. Oh, my gosh. Shelby. Come on, Shelby. Good. Now you see, look, these different dogs, like they get stuck, right? And they'll get stuck the first few times that they do it. Now, if you, now look at that. Look at Shelby. What Shelby, this Malinois, is saying is that she, this is her four-wheeler, and this is her activity. And she, <laughs> look, that's what I deal with with these Malinois. They're crazy. Look at Houston. He's a giant. He's 100 pounds. And Shelby's 12 pounds. And she says, hey, dude, get away from me. Oh, look at Hank. I'm going to help Hank up here. Come on, Hank. Oh my gosh, very nice. Now Hank's pretty laid back. Shelby's kind of a fireball, and here comes Shelby. Come on, you can do it. Very nice. Now, a lot of times what you'll see when you're like trying to get your dogs to get on things or go under things or go over things is like uh, some of them have a very easy time with it. The dogs that are more agile, the dogs that are stronger and structurally built, uh, you know, kind of a, you know, a little bit more stocky, you notice they're just better climbers. You see what I'm saying? So, like, look at this little dog here. I mean, obviously, if you look at her, I mean, you can just tell that is a powerful animal, you know? And so people are always asking me about exercise. They're like, hey, Stoney, what well, can I let my dog go down the stairs? Can I let my dog go up the steps? Can I? Well, listen, to be honest with you, I would not buy a dog that can't go up and down the steps. I mean, I just I wouldn't buy one. But, like, uh, this kind of dog I get. This kind of dog, or Black Lab. A Black Lab is the Toyota Tacoma of the dog world, you know. But these Malinois, look how sturdy that dog is. So you'll notice she hops right up there. Look at Hank. He hops right up there. Right. Look over here at Ronan. He's pretty sturdy built. Look at him. He hops right up there. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reward him for being over there. So look, guys, watch your dogs. And if they seem, like, if they seem to have trouble you know, articulating, if they seem to have trouble pulling themselves up, if they don't seem to have a good strength to weight ratio or good balance or good body awareness, then of course, make these challenges, you know, very doable for them, right? So you'll notice a lot of these puppies came over here, a lot of these dogs, like Iris, come here, Iris. Iris, Iris is not, come on, Iris, come here. Look, she doesn't even want to come over here and try this because it's a little bit physically hard for her. She's kind of a longer dog, and uh, like this climbing and jumping, she, you know, it's not, it's, not, it's not as much fun for her. So she's not as likely to want to jump up on here. Like Houston's real strong and this dog's real strong and compact and square. And uh, so watch him hop up here. Come on, Ronan. Come on, Ronan. Ronan, come on, buddy. Good boy. You can do it. Well, now he's not going to do it, of course. That's the dog business right there. You know, as soon as you say, watch this, it never happens. <clears throat> what about you, Goose? 
Come on, Houston. Oh, come here, big boy. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Now look, so here's Iris, and Iris is a little bit like, hey, I don't know if I want to do that. So I'm just going to throw her a treat for coming over here and trying. Oh, and Ronan, I'm not sure what Ronan is up to. He can jump up here pretty easily. Oh, now, let's do this. And this will change the whole game. Look at Hank. Hank turned around and thought about getting off of there. Now, <laughs> notice this. Notice this dog here. This dog here, zero concerns. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's what I mean. Like, listen, this dog here, if you're ready to, you know, you're ready to climb a mountain or get in a helicopter or something, then uh, she's gonna, she's gonna be right there with you. And Houston, he's pretty, he's pretty much adventuresome, right? And then I got a boxer over here, and he just can't wait to kind of cause trouble. He wants to chase the four-wheeler and bark at it. Now look at Ronan. It's another thing you'll notice. It's like dogs will find something, they'll go, well, Stoney, I'm just going to keep doing this one because it's easier, right? And I paid him the first time he did it, but I'm not paying him again until he comes over here and gets on my four-wheeler. Oh, you're a good dog. <clears throat> now, look at there. That's good. I appreciate that. I'll reward that. Now, let's take Goose here. Good. And sometimes, like, you know, if you don't have as much time as what I have and Eli has to work with dogs, then, like, if you put them on a leash, you can make all this go a little bit more quickly. Let me move around here so you can see better. Come on, Goose. So I can bring him over close to the four-wheeler. Good. Then I can get over here like this. Oh. Now, see, Goose literally just doesn't understand that if he put his feet here, that he would be able to climb up there more easily, you know. Oh. Yes, we know you can do it, big boy. Oh, come here, Goose. See, look at Goose. He, this is what you have to teach dogs, guys. You have to teach them how to approach problem solving. Do you see the Goose? He literally, come on. Goose literally doesn't understand the concept of like using the step to walk up. So I'm gonna guide him. Good, get him over here. Get him on the step. Use a little bit of light leash pressure or maybe a little bit of collar pressure to get his feet up there. Support his bottom. Oh, and the next thing you know, he's up there and on it. So, you can take the really, really patient approach or the not so patient approach. It all works out in the end. Good. Very nice. All right. So, same thing with the kayak. Let's get over here. We're going to climb in the kayak. I just throw some treats in the kayak. And there goes Houston. Those other dogs will see Houston get in there, and they'll say, well, if Houston can get in there, surely I can get in there. Problem is Houston is so big that there's no space. So you got to go, dude. Go. Oh, what about you, Shelby? Can you get in there? Watch. I'm going to support her. I'm going to put her feet up here, support her bottom just a little bit. Let her pull herself up. Very nice. Throw her a couple of treats in there. And I'm going to throw a couple of treats in that blind. Maybe she'll run in there. And then, so Iris, do you want to try? You can get in there, Iris. Let's see. And so Iris, we'll do the same thing with Iris. We'll put her front paws on here, support her bottom, let her pull herself in there. Good. She goes in there, something good happens. Now, look at Grumpy Pants. Go on, Grumpy Pants. Oh, do the same thing with Goose. Put his front feet on here, support his bottom. Now, I'm not, I'm not doing this for him, guys. I'm supporting his bottom just a little bit so that when he makes that pulling motion with his front legs, he gets up there. Very nice. All right. Listen, go on, fathead. Goose is up there. Get in there. Very nice. All right, now come here, Jack. Let's see about Jack. We're gonna put Jack's paws up there. I'm gonna support his bottom just a little bit, and then he's gonna learn to pull himself up. Look, he doesn't understand yet, but here in a minute, give him a little incentive. There he goes, now he understands. He gets himself in there. And we'll do this for a few days with them if they seem nervous. Now, little dogs like this one right here, just to be honest with you, uh, you can just grab them, throw them in the kayak or the John boat or on your four-wheeler, and uh, they pretty much just rock and roll. We're going to go back over to the truck. Hey, dogs! Get in the truck! Throw some treats in the back of the truck. Get in the truck! 
Go on, dude. Very nice. Now look at Ronan. You know, Ronan's saying, he's from Ohio, and he thinks this is a union job. Unions are big in Ohio. So, like, he's like, well, how about this, Tony? I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll go halfway. Nope, dude, get in the truck. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Goose, you too. Get in the truck. Get in the truck, nerd. In the truck. In the truck. Good. I'm going to call them out of the truck. Come on, dogs. Very nice. Get in the truck. There you go. Good. Get everybody in the truck. Load up, dude. Sometimes you got to help them. Get in the truck. Oh, get in the truck, nerd. Get in the truck, nerd. Get in the truck, nerd. Come on, nerd. Get in the truck. Oh, all the way in the truck. Good. Now stay in the truck. Ah, what did I tell you? Stay in the truck. So if we can get them in the truck, we got to work on staying in the truck. Good. So what I'll do is I'll get them in here. I'll bring them back a treat. Wait. And I'll walk back. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, put them back in the truck. Come on, Ronan. Oh, you nerds are going to get in trouble. In the truck. In the truck. In the truck. In the truck. Stay. Wait there. Now look at Jack. He has somehow or another. Oh, decided he wasn't getting in the truck. Stay. Now, teaching the dog to stay in the bed of the truck, uh -uh, it's pretty simple. Wait. For the same reason that, you know, it's simple to teach a dog to stay like on a place board. Whenever you see dog trainers, wait. Whenever you see dog trainers working with place boards and things like that, the reason they're using them is because it's really easy. You see how that dog has to make a decision to get down? Uh-uh. So it's a great place to work on no. Stay. Good. So they wait there, and then I come back and I selectively reward them. Good. For whoever I think is being the most calm and patient. Very nice. Wait there. No. Uh -uh. Now they'll get a little antsy here. Uh -uh. Now what you'll notice, guys, and this almost doesn't fail. Stay. The dogs that are better at doing the motion exercises, like the more athletic, higher energy dogs, the ones that really excel at jumping and climbing and stuff, like Shelby, they have the worst time with staying. And the ones that are really good at having perfect manners and staying, uh -uh, have the worst time, oh, with doing the motion exercises. Stay. Good. This is a good patience, exercise, patience building exercise here. Just get in the truck, wait in the truck. You know, because when you go out and like, you know, you, you know, if you go to the lake or you go to the river or you go kayaking or camping or whatever, there's a whole lot of times where you need to tell your dog to get in the truck because you have to go get something. You know what I'm saying? You got to get your trailer hooked up to the truck or unhooked. You have to get your kayaks out of the water. You got to get your beer out of the cooler. You know, whatever it is that you're working on and the dog needs to be able to get in the truck and just sit there and chill, you know? So... Just as important as teaching the dog to get in the truck or on the four-wheeler or in the boat is teaching them to wait, you know? So, like, never teach a dog to, to, to do something active that you don't have a corresponding passive activity that controls it, you know? So, like, if I teach get in the truck, I teach stay in the truck. If I teach get on the four-wheeler, I teach stay on the four-wheeler. If I teach get in the boat, well, of course, you got to stay in the boat because, like, <laughs> listen, we go kayaking a lot around here and I... I and it's nothing to see, especially down to Kentucky River. Somebody will come in and rent a kayak, and they'll think, oh, my dog will love doing this. And uh, <laughs> they'll get right out in the middle of the river. Nah, -uh. They'll get right out in the middle of the river, and the dog will jump out. And the canoe will tip, or the kayak will tip, and the dog will run the bank, and then the people are trying to chase the dog. It's crazy. Happens all the time. Nah, -uh. all because they didn't work on weight, or stay, or whatever you want to call it. I don't care. Good. But that's pretty easy. Right there. Whole bed full of dogs. Uh -uh. 
And with this exercise here, just be very patient. If you have one dog, it's pretty easy. Uh -uh. If you have multiple dogs, it's not quite as easy just because like they have different personalities. Like that little Malinois right there, like I said, she's perfect at the motion exercises. Uh -uh. She just ain't perfect at sitting and being still. And she's also not perfect at not being grouchy with the other dogs. Good. Uh -uh. Every day I add a little time and distance. Now I'm gonna try to turn my four-wheeler on and keep those dogs in the truck, which might or might not. Ah, 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 ah. Nope, 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 nope. Get back in there, nerd. Ah, this is what you'll run into, guys. As soon as you start to add a higher level of distraction, you lose the focus on the dog. So don't get frustrated here. This is the hard part. This is what separates the really well-trained dogs. Oh, nope. Oh, get back in there, nerd. Stay from the not so well trained dogs. Now nobody's getting out of this truck till everybody's calm and quiet. Dun, 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 dun. Uh -uh. Nope. Now, uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. nope. And so you saw in the beginning of the exercises, I was using the treats real heavy. But as I end the exercise, since the dogs are being calm and passive, what they want, when you make a dog stay like that, what they want more than anything else is, their, is to be let go, is to get their freedom. And so like when you're letting a dog off of a stay, <laughs> the freedom is kind of what becomes the, the reinforcer. And then over the course of times, the dog will generalize this pattern. They'll understand that being calm and quiet leads to action, right? So if I'm calm and quiet, I get to get in the truck. If I'm calm and quiet, I get to get on the four-wheeler. If I'm calm and quiet, I get to get in a kayak and go to, the, go to the lake. And then if I'm in the lake and I want to go to the bank, if I'm calm and quiet, that's how I get to go to the bank. So everything is predicated on calm, polite, attentive behavior. Okay, guys, okay, okay, babies. Oh, you're very smart. You're very smart dogs. Okay, so uh, I showed you a bunch of different, kind of, kind of a parade of breeds around here, but here's the breed I want to show you next. This is an Australian cattle dog, and uh, now you'll notice this Australian cattle dog and this Malinois, they're very similar, both in conformation and temperament, uh, but Australian cattle dogs are the kings of riding in trucks. <laughs> Listen, they are the king of balance. Like around here you see, not so much anymore because the safety, safety sallies have got onto everybody, but for years when I was growing up, you would see these little healers uh, on the back of flatbed trucks or on the, uh, uh, or, or on the toolboxes in pickup trucks, just riding down the road, you know, going 50, 60 miles an hour, and they're surfing like a boss, you know. And was it dangerous? Uh, well, yeah, of course it's dangerous. But dang, what a what an awesome life to live up till something bad happens, right? So I don't know that uh, safety city rules of, of not letting these healers ride on toolboxes, I don't know if that's a good thing or not, guys, to be honest with you. Because like, if you think about living your life in, in the totality of richness of your life, you can lead a long, boring life, and I'm not sure that that's preferable to a little bit shorter but way more exciting life. Now, I guess that's up to you to decide, but don't be so quick to be judgmental. You know, these dogs love riding on stuff. They love riding on trucks. They love riding in horse trailers. They love riding on four-wheelers. And they are bosses. And I mean total bosses. There, there's no comparison of any other dog that I've ever seen personally. So let's take a little ride with uh, Dirt. Hey, come on, Dirt. Get on a four-wheeler, dude. <laughs> I mean, look. Look at him run over here and jump up there. Ain't that crazy? You know? I mean, he's just like, he is, like I told you, the king boss rider of all dogs. Now, if you'll notice, who comes along with them? Here comes Shelby. Now, Shelby, a Malinois, is a very similar, like I said, confirmationally, it's very similar. Like, it's a different color and different size a little bit, but like the way they're built, the way they move, the way they uh, think, their level, level of uh, pattern cognizance, things like that are very similar between a Malinois and an Australian cattle dog. So I can probably take uh, this dog with me too. There you go. Good. Get up here. And the good thing about these dogs is you don't have to baby them and be so, like, be, they're not fragile. You know, that's what I like about these kind of dogs. You just kind of grab them and manhandle them a little bit, and they do fine. Now, 
like right here, you'll notice I'm gonna let dirt ride on the back. This dog, these Malinois, they're a little bit more impulsive about this kind of stuff. So when I first started introducing these Malinois to the four-wheeler, I like to hold on to them a little bit because sometimes they'll uh, kind of jump. Let me double check. See, look at Jack. <laughs> hey, let's talk about the difference in dogs for a second. Get down there, Eli, and show them, Jack. <laughs> That's just an old trusting Labrador retriever for you. Jack, Jack literally just gets under the four-wheeler and says, hey, I'm sure nothing bad will happen to me. That's why Jack would never be a guard dog. Come here, Jack, get out of there. He has no sense of danger. <laughs> Jack is like, hey, Stoney, I know everything's gonna be fine today. I mean, Labradors are the eternal optimists, you know? All right, let's get Jack out of the way a little bit. Oh, and get these two eggheads back on here. Dirt, come on, dirt, dirt, get up here. Now you can hear those two, come on. Come on, you can come on. Hush, hush, hush. Now, one of the things we're going to have to do with Jack, because Jack, uh, obviously, uh, 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 dirt, dirt. Remember I was telling you guys that the dogs that are best at movement, they're not the best at having good manners or being calm and quiet and staying still. Well, this is the perfect example. This dog here should be in the Wikipedia entry for athletic dogs that uh, have trouble being calm and quiet. So we'll just carry, we'll carry this guy with us. Come on, Dirt, get up here. We'll let Dirt come, and we'll let Shelby come. Come on, Shelby. Oh, you can do it. Come on, get up there. Goose, you go over that way. All right, so here we go. Now, one of the things people always ask me, like, really, get out of my treat pouch, is they always ask me, they say, hey, Stoney, what about, like, are you teaching the dog to want to chase cars? Uh, want to chase motorcycles, to want to chase four-wheelers. Well, no, guys. Like, that kind of behavior, it's hardwired in a dog, especially these herding breeds of dogs. So what we're doing, when we get them out here and acclimate them to the truck and we acclimate them to, to uh, the motorcycles and the bicycles and the scooters and stuff like that, we're helping them find a place for that natural instinct to herd, to chase. You know, if you've ever lived out in the country, you'll see these blue heelers. They'll be on a country road and they'll just wait in front of their house for a car to go by and they'll run beside that car until they get to the property line and they'll stop and then they'll go reset. It's a, it's a really a pretty interesting thing. And then if you have any experience with a, if you have any experience with a Malinois, okay Goose, come on. If you have any experience with a Malinois, well then you know that they'll chase and bite anything that moves. You know, it's like what I was saying earlier. So, <laughs> look, I got these two self-sufficient herding dogs in the back and I got these two eternally optimistic, nothing bad can happen to me labs that I'm having to hold on my lap. <laughs> Big lap dogs. But this is what we do all the time. Now once the dogs get a little bit spoiled to riding on the four-wheeler, <laughs> then, uh, then you gotta break the news to them that they don't get to ride all the time. They gotta, they gotta get out and exercise because a tired dog is a good dog. But right now they're being pretty fine animals. And so we're just gonna go on a little trip around the yard. Very nice. But that's really all there is to it, guys. You just have to be consistent and uh, persistent, and maybe persistent being the more important of the two words there. Ah, uh, and try to be careful. <laughs> Don't bite off more than you can chew. Now, Uncle Stoney can do four of these fine animals at one time. I don't suggest that you do four at a time. You might just stick with one at a time. All right, hey, I'll see y'all later.